This is the ancient city of Calabar, the people's paradise. Welcome to Calabar, the heart of Cross River State, Nigeria. In this documentary, we will embark on a journey through time, exploring the rich history and vibrant culture of this ancient city. Calabar boasts a storied past, with remnants of colonial architecture and echoes of the slave trade era. The old residency museum stands as a testament to this history offering a glimpse into the city's colonial legacy. Mary Slessor's house pays homage to the Scottish missionary who left an indelible mark on Calabar's society. Calabar is one of the oldest trading centers in Nigeria. The city is set on a natural hill overlooking the Calabar River. Calabar had been inhabited by the ethnic-speaking people since at least the 17th century and became a center for slave trade at the dawn of the trade. Between the late 19th and the early 20th centuries, it became one of the biggest colonial administrative centers and capital of the Niger Coast Protectorate, later called the Southern Nigeria Protectorate. But as the tides of time embedded and flowed, so did the fortunes of Calabar. Colonial powers left their imprint and the city witnessed the struggles and triumphs of independence. Through adversity, Calabar retained its resilience, a living testament to the indomitable spirit that defined its people. Since the 16th century, Calabar has served as an international shipping seaport where goods and services such as palm oil are being shipped out of the country. During the period of the transatlantic slave trade, Calabar became a major port in the transportation of African slaves and it was named Calabar by the Spanish. Today, the ancient city of Calabar stands at the crossroads of tradition and modernity, a place where history whispers through the rustling leaves and the river's gentle flow. Its story continues, a captivating narrative that beckons all who listen to be a part of the ongoing saga of this timeless city. But Calabar is not just a city frozen in time, it's a dynamic metropolis that has gracefully embraced the present. Its evolving skyline reflects a blend of tradition and modernity, creating a unique tapestry of architectural wonders. Calabar is now the capital of Cross River State of Nigeria. The city is a major center of tourism in Nigeria. It's a charming and quiet, peaceful city. Attractions include the Slave Museum, Calabar Free Trade Zone, Tinampa Business and Tourist Resorts, Cultural and Civic Center, Calabar Port and University campuses. There is a lot of colonial architecture in the older parts of Calabar that are around Ensure Town, Duke Town, and the waterfront areas. I'm right in front of Duke Town Secondary School. We were made to understand this school started as a primary school before it was now upgraded to a secondary school. This is the oldest school here in Calabar. It was established in the year 1846. And directly opposite me is a cemetery. Inside this graveyard is the tomb of Mary Slessor, who advocated against the killing of twins here in Calabar. So unfortunate, the place is not well cleared, so we can't actually go inside to show you. My name is George Adam. I'm a teacher in um, Government Migrant Science Technical College, Anderson Street, Calabar here. Here we have about three ethnic communities here. We have the Boko, Boko, what I call the film group. And um, some people have this um, idea that took town as the oldest town in Calabar and say no. The oldest town in Calabar when the people migrated down here is the Oputong town, which is referred to as Old Town. 
Just as Duke Town was owned by the Scotland Church Mission, the Presbyterian Church, the Presbyterian Church also found the old town Presbyterian Church in Obutong Town in Calabar, MC Road by as well as besides the street. And then it's called the Presbyterian Church Old Town Obutong Calabar. And the whole part of Calabar is also located around the axis, which is the second oldest school south of Niger. Which shows that Presbyterian Church Mission has done a lot of work in Calabar actually. In fact, the first mission to actually land and come to Calabar. And they started by trying to make us know the value of education because basically the Bible was written in English and they needed people who would interpret, read and interpret the Bible to people. That's why the education was a priority. So I want to say that Duke Town is one of the oldest Catholic kingdoms that has produced kings. But it's not the oldest African kingdom that arrived in Calabar. The oldest African kingdom that arrived in Calabar is the Obutong town, the Obutong community. In fact, it's, one of the, it's among one of the seven African kingdoms that arrived here before others started coming in. <laughs> And I was it called? I said golden balls. Golden balls. Wow. This one have only Calabaya and they get out of Golden balls. No, well, I want to test the golden balls today. We get balls for Lagos, eh, but not the golden balls. Now Lagos balls. For puff. How much do you have on Okay. As you can see right behind me is the biggest market here in Calabar. It's called the Watt Market here in the capital city of Cross River State. Whenever you pop into Cross River State, you pop into Calabar and you need to make your shopping, you need to buy things. This is your right destination. This is the right place to get all your valuables you need to buy. This is Watt Market, Calabar, Cross River State. Stretching across bustling streets, this market is a kaleidoscope of colors, sounds and aromas. It's not just a marketplace, it's a cultural melting pot where vendors and buyers converge creating an atmosphere that encapsulates the essence of Calabar. The Watt Market is not only the largest market in Calabar, but also a treasure trove of local delicacies, handmade crafts and traditional attire. From the savory aroma of local dishes like afang soup to the intricate beadwork adorning vibrant fabrics. The market is a sensory feast. Beyond the market, Calabar is famed for hosting one of Africa's biggest street parties, the Calabar Carnival. A celebration of culture, creativity and community. The carnival brings together people from all walks of life, showcasing the city's dynamic spirit. Calabar Festival is held every year through the month of December and attracts thousands within and beyond Nigeria. The festival includes music performances from both local and international artists, a boat regatta, fashion shows, Christmas village, traditional dances, and the annual Ekwe Festival. The Ekwe Masquerade danced through the streets, adorned in elaborate costumes, embodying the spirits of ancestors and waving a bridge between the past and the present. Like other major cities in Nigeria, power supply could be a major problem. Water is easily available in the city and it is of very good quality. The city is a few hours drive to the Obudu Mountain Resort, which had hosted many presidential retreats and conferences in the past. There is an airport which has connecting flights to other major cities in Nigeria. The local authorities have made a great effort to make the streets safe by enlarging them removing potholes and adding stripes between lanes. As long as you are careful, Calabar is quite safe. As night fell, the city transformed into a beacon of warmth and hospitality. Bonfires flickered along the river banks, illuminating the faces of storytellers who spawn captivating myths and legends. Calabar's folklore painted the vivid images of gods and heroes. Join us in the next chapter as we continue to unravel the tapestry of Nigeria's diverse and captivating landscapes. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more informative content like this. This is our discovery for today. See you next time.